Okay, we got our Cooler Master 431 prepped and ready for the motherboard. Um, don't forget to slide in and put this in first. Uh, I was already test driving the uh, motherboard and I forgot to put it in. So all it does, it clips into place for all your accessories on the back and everything. So go ahead and do that. And then these right here. On the Cooler Master, it gives you for micro ATX or a full-blown ATX and once you put them in there it's so simple now this is a mid tower this is not a full case and uh, this mid tower seems to have all the room I need for what I have and keeps it um, from taking up so much room I went ahead and mounted the uh, PSU uh, just a few screws right there on the back so she's ready to go um, I went with 875 watt PSU since I'm going to be running a couple of video cards and SSD and probably three other hard drives so Let's go ahead and drop this motherboard in. Now with your PSU already in here and your mount's already there, now on the back of the case there's actually shows you which holes you need to fill in for which board you're using, if it's a micro ATX or ATX. Once you get all that covered, then you're pretty much ready to install. Once you have the back plate on, so just carefully lift it up at an angle, come in here, make sure all your wires out of the way, and pretty much head right to where your mounts were. put it just be gentle and easy okay once you get in there like I say carefully sit in there go right where your mounts are get that all done next step is we're pretty much ready for to screw it in there this uh um, takes the fine screws in there so I usually stick them in the hole first get nine screws to put in there All you pretty much have to do is just snug them down. So Now that I've got the motherboard secured to the case, so it's time to start putting some of the wiring together. Now, you guys look at this. Look, building your own computer is fun. You can go to Amazon, start checking out the stuff. Now, some of the problems you'll run into is not everything on Amazon description-wise tells you what will fit, what won't fit. But that's why this how-to channel actually shows it so if you've act, ever wanted to build your own computer and see what it's all about time to have some fun and do it it's uh it's cheaper you can build a better unit uh have more fun at it you know if you got some kids that are interested in doing gaming and stuff like that something you do together it's like a giant puzzle you got to order all the pieces you get to wait for it on there amazon's great customer service is great with them um, you know a little bit about what you're looking for what to get then the end product is pretty much something that you built with your own hands and had a little bit of fun at doing it so some of the things you got to look for this is a 24 pin setup right here for your power so that one's gonna be easy that's your big one right there so a lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory this pin right here goes to your 3.0 ports all of them have little directional pieces that you go there if you've got 3.0 then you're going to have that. Now the only thing that really gets any kind of complicated on this is this little section right here because you have to know what goes where and the cool thing about it is because it's an ATX design everything's kind of color coded and it really just helps out a lot so when you're looking at this stuff right here you know it and it even says on the little thing it says you know this is the H the hard drive LED which you know tells you when your hard drive is working the red will be the positive side and then you'll see right there where it is in there so um, that's pretty much what you want to do let's see and this one comes down here plugs in right there now the other one we got a power and we got a reset and so we want to find the power and the reset Alright, here's the power switch right here, as you see. So, where it says power. The blue, uh, the orange on it is the positive, of course. So, you want to put it on there. And let's see. This one is. We got a couple more in here. Let's see what this one is right here. The blue one. The blue one is the reset switch. And then you also have the positive and negative. So, all right, reset. 
it's the opposite direction of the power one so if you got big hands like me then you'll have a hard time plugging these in so you just got to be a little bit patient on that so we got one more switch in here to plug in let's see we got a speaker power so Let's go ahead and get another one, one of these wires out of the way so we can make a little room. Now this one right here goes to the opposite side. This one right here, this goes to your optical. So just kind of feed everything through. Be gentle and easy. We'll have to re-secure these down a little bit later. So, and you'll, I mean, they're, they, they have markings on the edges right here, so it's pretty easy to tell you where it's got to go. Put it in there, snaps into place, that's good to go. Now something like this, since we don't have a fan up here right now, we'll be able to put a little zip tie up here to keep it out of the way. So, like I said, we got the main power wire right here. So you can go ahead and bring it around. Snaps right into place. Right. Now, I've already got, this is a SATA 3 system, so down below on this one is where I'm putting the SATA 3 and I actually have the X-Dock um, powered up already these are for your hard drives so um, we're gonna go ahead and power these guys up these right here go for your video cards these are little six pin connectors dual six pin right here means I'm set up for dual video cards um, this one's probably going to run the SLI system, so I'm going to run dual Sapphire cards in here and have one heck of a system. Um, sometimes when you're doing composites, it gets pretty intense. So we got a few more things we're going to install in here. Um, got the back audio back here, and this one is hiding right here. So we'll have to take the audio and run it across. And again, now these have where they're, if they're missing a little spot down here, um, just look in there and it pretty much will go right into place. So this one was extra, so I'll end up zip tying it back out of the way. So now there's plenty of hard drive plugs. Um, there was four already in here, so that's plenty for this case for what I'm doing. But we got a couple more little things to plug in and then we are actually powered up and we're actually at the point now coming up next is we're going to go ahead and install the 8 core FX 8350. We're going to go ahead and do the RAM. Got a couple other little odds and ends. Now one of the things I'm waiting on before I finish the build is my PS2 um, adapter that goes in the back for the mouse and for the keyboard. Other than that, we just started out this system with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but we are going to switch them out to 32 gigabytes. Um, we're going to start with our two 8, two 8 gigabyte sticks with Corsair. Um, I just went with the 8 gigs right now as for testing purposes. So let me go ahead and get a couple more things uh, plugged in, and then we're going to come back and we're going to install the 8 core um, CPU. We're going to do the RAM, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing almost ready to fire up.